The Diabetes Prevention Program and the Center for Disease Control are pretty clear in their recommendations that you need to lower your fat intake to prevent the progression or the development of type 2 diabetes. But is that accurate? I think we have plenty of evidence now to suggest it's hypercaloric diets, high carb, high fat combined, ultra processed foods, maybe even just high carb foods that contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes. But what it isn't is fat intake, especially within the context of an otherwise healthy diet and healthy lifestyle. Fat does not contribute to type 2 diabetes or prediabetes in that setting. We have plenty of evidence to suggest that. Now a new study looking at dairy fat confirms that and actually shows that there might be a protective effect uh, to high fat dairy to developing prediabetes. So I think we need to assess this a little more closely and sort of wake up some of these guidelines to bring them up to current speed with um, the most recent evidence. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to talk to you about this one particular study recently published in the European Journal of Nutrition titled Dairy Product Consumption and Incident Prediabetes in Dutch Middle-Aged Adults, the Horn Studies Protective Cohort. Now, what this study was, it was an observational trial, right? So like any nutritional observational trials, we have to know right away we're starting with the lowest quality evidence, and they followed 2,262 participants and after 6.4 years, 35.9% developed prediabetes. So right away, that's a little concerning that in just six and a half years, almost 36% of the people, a third of the people developed prediabetes. So, so that's a concern in and of itself. But they had them you know, fill out food frequency questionnaires to figure out what they were eating and, and analyze the type of dairy that they were eating and then try to correlate the type of dairy they were eating and the risk of prediabetes. So observational doesn't prove causation, low quality. So what they found was high fat fermented dairy, any cheese and high fat cheese were associated with a reduction in the development of prediabetes between 14% and 21%. So a reduction by eating high fat cheese, uh, high fat fermented dairy. That certainly goes against this concern that high fat causes type two diabetes. Now here's what's interesting. Anytime you're looking at these observational studies, you have to go back and look at the baseline criteria or the baseline findings um, in the people in the different quartiles. And what we usually see, at least in a lot of the US-based um, studies, is there is a significant difference by those who eat the most fat and the lowest fat, the most red meat, the lowest red meat, the most high fat dairy, the lowest high fat dairy. There's a significant difference with the group eating the most uh, of the high fat version are far less healthy. They smoke more, they exercise less, they're lower uh, socioeconomic and education level. Um, they're more likely to have pre-existing medical conditions. I mean, those are usually across the board. But remember, this was a Dutch study. And one of the things I was impressed with is that healthy user or unhealthy user bias was much less prevalent in this study. And that's one thing I find so interesting because this study obviously did not show an association between the high fat intake and risk of developing prediabetes. And it did not have that unhealthy user bias as strong as we have in the US-based studies. So that could possibly be an explanation of, of, what, of what occurred. Now, I want to be clear about the strength of this data. I would never say high fat dairy has now proven to prevent prediabetes because, I mean, you look at the uh, table three, their risk ratios for the association between dairy intake and incidence of prediabetes. And it is just a minefield trying to interpret you know, four different models, uh, the four different quartiles. Uh, most of the confidence intervals are crossing one, which means they're not significant. It's rare to find ones that don't cross one and are significant. So the overwhelming majority of this study found a null result, that there was no increase or decrease risk. And there were a few subsets that showed a decreased risk. So I would never interpret this study to say high fat dairy prevents you from developing prediabetes. But what is overwhelmingly clear by the study is it does not cause it. It did not lead to a higher risk uh, of prediabetes. So I think this is just adds more, more evidence that we have to, like we being the medical community, the nutritional community, and certainly the guidelines um, committees have to look at to say, well, maybe our, our assumption that higher fat leads to prediabetes or type 2 diabetes is wrong because it's based in such poor quality 
data. I mean, I think that that's the only conclusion we can really come to, and we need to sort of wake up to that. So I'm going to keep talking about these studies, I guess, until I'm blue in the face to try and point out these differences. So even if the guidelines committees and the major organizations don't come around to that yet, you as an individual can see the quality of the data we're talking about and can see the associations about higher fat and type 2 diabetes are incredibly weak, especially when you look at all these trials at looking at lower lowering carbohydrates and leaving fat alone or even raising it a little can treat and prevent um, type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. That, that's the evidence as a clinician I want to see, not observational data with food frequency questionnaires and very poor quality data, low hazard ratios, unhealthy user bias. That's not the data I'm interested in. I'm interested in knowing when you take somebody and you put them on a specific intervention, what happens to their health. And that data clearly shows that uh, higher fat diets are not associated with an increased risk of prediabetes and diabetes, and now we have more evidence to support it based on this observational study, um, this Dutch observational study. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, part of my job is really just to try and add some clarity to what these studies show and put it in the greater context of the nutritional field uh, of scientific evidence. So if you thought this was helpful, please click the thumbs up and the subscribe button down below so you'll get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.